Hello friends, I'm Professor John Gallagher and welcome to CircuitPython School, an introduction to CircuitPython for absolute beginners. We'll get ready to code by setting up our board with the latest CircuitPython software and libraries that we'll need, and we'll install the software Moo, which we'll use to write Python programs. So let's get started, Maker. Open a browser and head to circuitpython.org, click Downloads, scroll and find the board that we're using, Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, and click to download. Your browser is probably showing a number that's later than the one that's shown here. The open source team behind CircuitPython is always updating the language with new features and better stability, so just get the latest one listed. After clicking download, your browser might save this file to your downloads folder. I have my browser configured to ask where I want to save this, so I'm going to save mine to the desktop. And we just downloaded a .uf2 file that we'll use to put CircuitPython on the board. But before we do that, let's also download the library files. These are files that extend the CircuitPython language to do additional things, including controlling LED lights and working with Bluetooth. So click Libraries at the top of this page, and the first bundle should have a number that matches the version of CircuitPython that you just downloaded, so click this top bundle. And again, yours might save it to the download folder. I'm saving mine to the desktop, and this is everything we need to download to configure our board. Now let's get our files on the board. So now you can exit your browser. My files are on the desktop, so I'll return there. You might need to open your downloads folder. And now let's set up your CPB to accept the .uf2 file that we just downloaded. To do this, plug your USB cable into your computer, then plug the micro USB end into your CPB. And it's very important to make sure that you're using a data cable. Many cables are charge only, so if for some reason your CPB doesn't show up in the desktop like I'm about to demonstrate, you might be using the wrong cable. Now I'm using a CPB that I've already installed a project on, so you're not seeing anything flash on the board, but if you're using a brand new CPB, you'll probably see a rainbow pattern swirl across the circle of LED lights on the board. Looks cool, but this is about to go away. Then double click the center reset button on the CPB. You should see the device flash, then the circle of LEDs on the device will light up green, and you'll see a new device mounted on your computer named CPlay Boot. Now this is your circuit playground, and when mounted on your computer, it looks and acts just like a USB drive, so you can drag and drop files onto this device. So now drag the .uf2 file that you just downloaded, that's the one that starts with Adafruit underscore circuit python underscore circuit playground, and drop it into CPlay Boot. Now this file will copy over, the CPlay Boot device will dismount not from your computer. If you have a Mac, you'll probably get a disk not ejected properly warning in the upper right. Just ignore that. This is not a problem at all. And you'll see a new device mounted on your computer named CircuitPy. Congratulations! You've just configured your CPB to run CircuitPython. By the way, if you ever have a CPB that you haven't used in a while and you're wondering what version of CircuitPython is installed on the board, just plug it in, open the CircuitPy volume when it mounts, then open up the boot underscore out dot txt file, and you'll see the version that's installed and the date that version was created. Now it's time to copy over the additional library files that we'll be using in CircuitPython School. Now the reason we do this is that these library files extend the CircuitPython programming language so that we can do even more stuff. Now the reason all of this capability isn't built into the file that we just copied over is that it would take up too much room on the device. On devices like the CPB, there's simply not enough space for all of the files in the LIB folder, so we just copy over what we need when we need it. Now I'm going to leave my CircuitPy volume open and set up an LIB folder that has all of the files that we need. Then I'm going to copy this LIB folder onto my Circuit Playground. Now all the libraries that we want are in this folder here that we just downloaded, not the UF2 file. You can actually throw the UF2 file in the trash now if you want to. Now we need this folder named Adafruit-CircuitPython-Bundle. Open that up. There are a bunch of additional folders and files in here. If you ever want to explore Adafruit's example code, you can find lots of examples in the example folder, but the files that we're interested in right now are in the LIB folder. So open up that folder, and in another window, I'm going to navigate to the desktop, and I'm going to create a brand new LIB folder where we'll drag over just the library files that we need. So if you have a Mac, you can right-click or two-finger click, select New Folder. I'm going to name this folder folder LIB. It's very important that it's lowercase LIB. Then I'll open this new folder. There's nothing in it, but I'm going to return to the original folder that contains all of the libraries. And for the initial lessons in CircuitPython school, we need these folders and files, 11 in total. Now we could always add these for projects as we need them, but it's probably easier for us to copy these over all at once so you're ready for most of the playlist. So I'm going to speed up the video, but here are the names so that you can just scroll and find them and drag them over into the new LIB folder. Or on the Mac, if you option drag like I'm doing in my video, you can actually make copies of the files in the folders so you're not simply moving them. Now once you've copied all 11 of these libraries, 7 folders named Adafruit BLE, Adafruit Bluefruit Connect, Adafruit Bus Device, Adafruit Circuit Playground, Adafruit Fancy LED, Adafruit LED Animation, and Adafruit Motor, plus four files named Adafruit underscore LIS3DH, 
Adafruit Thermistor, NeoPixel, and Simple I.O., we're ready to copy the LIB folder to our circuit playground. So now I'm going to close the window that contains all of the Adafruit libraries. I don't need all of those files. Then I'm going to navigate back to the LIB folder that I just created that contains only those folders and files that I need. And I'm going to drag this folder, the LIB folder I just created, onto my CircuitPy volume. This copies over the LIB folder with all the libraries that I need onto my CPB, and I'm ready to put a CircuitPython program onto this device that'll do some cool stuff. Now, in order to write CircuitPython programs, we're going to use a free program named Moo, M-U, and it's available for Mac and Windows. Now, in the way that Microsoft Word is used to create word processing files, Moo lets us create Python programs and save them to the CPB. So let's get Moo. We'll open up a browser, go to the unusual URL codewith.moo, there's no .com in there, click download. Since I have a Mac, I'm going to click download under the Mac option. Your browser may save your file to the downloads folder. My browser asks me where I want to save. I'll select the desktop. Then you can minimize your browser, double click the DMG file, agree to the terms of service. We see some files being installed. You'll see a Moo icon on my desktop, but I'm going to ignore that icon. Then use this install window to drag the Moo editor icon into the applications folder. That'll copy Moo into the applications folder. And then you can close the finder window and also drag these two icons into the trash. They were used by the installation process. We don't need them anymore. If you open the finder window and click the applications folder, you can now verify that you've indeed got a program called Moo Editor in there. Now I'm also gonna drag a Moo Editor from my applications folder into the dock. Then you can double click to launch Moo. On the Mac, you'll be asked if it's okay to open Moo since it was downloaded from the internet and not the app store. Click open, this is okay. Moo will load. And if you're asked to select the mode, make sure that you select the option that has CircuitPython in it. So nice work, Pythonista. Your CPB is updated, loaded with libraries, and ready for greatness, and your computer is cooking with Moo. So next up, we'll start coding so that you can start to make something awesome.